Hi everybody, this is so exciting to be in a room full of my people because finally I don't have to explain what I do for a living and people are like, huh? Live out of a suitcase? So today I'm going to talk about this very thing and I hope that you're excited about this. I've had a lot of conversations over the last couple of days about people who are like, I have these ideas, I have these skills, I have these experiences, but I have no idea how to make money from that. So that's what we're going to do. Does that sound good? Yeah. Can I have that? Does that sound good? Did you, thank you. Because did you notice in that motivational video, it was all dudes going, yeah, yeah, you got to do it. And I was like, where's the women? So I had to put that in. Okay. <laughs> My Tony Robbins moment. So uh, I'm a big one for getting you to take action. So this is more like kind of a workshop style. I want you guys to take notes. I want you to tweet, hashtag choose freedom. And um, take photos, do whatever you want. Send it to my mum. So here's what you're going to learn today. How you can find your sweet spot, actually get paid to do what you love and work from anywhere. Hope that sounds good. I decided to throw in the seven day challenge and see if you guys can actually launch a product in the next seven days based on what you already know and are good at. And I'm going to tell you how to build an awesome community of raving fans, a loyal community that just love you. Cool? Alright. So, who the heck am I? She gave me a little introduction. Um, so I am Natalie Sisson from New Zealand. I literally do live out of a suitcase. For the last five years I've been doing that, travelling to, well, 69 countries since I was born. It's also my favourite number, not for those, those reasons, but it is. So I always feel like I don't want to go to a new country because then I'm going to get to 70, you know. Um, anyway, I literally do live out of a suitcase. It's slightly more modern now. It's a German one from Ramoa. I have a MacBook now. And apparently, I should have been doing this all my life. So when I went back to New Zealand a few years ago to visit my family, where I have just one box in storage, um, they showed me this photo and I was like, oh, if only I'd seen this like years ago, maybe I would have started my business earlier. So how did I start out? Well, I did my time. I did eight years in the corporate world. Absolutely doing marketing, branding, business development. I did my time. I made people's hair look beautiful through Schwarzkopf Professional as the national brand manager. Then I got people to gamble while I was at the Museum of Lotteries Commission and spend lots of money trying to win their dream ticket. I helped people get beautiful um, vision through laser refractive eye surgery working for Bausch & Long. I noticed both of these are German companies. Nice affinity there. And I went on to the British Medical Association where I was trying to turn doctors into entrepreneurs. And this was the final job that looked amazing on paper, but was in reality just pretty terrible actually. The organisation didn't let me do my job. I had so much passion, so much energy. And I was like, okay, that's it. If they're not going to let me be head of propositions development and turn doctors into entrepreneurs, then I'm out of here. I quit. I just got a promotion. I uh, just got a pay rise and I've just invested in a property in London, UK. And I said, I'm going to go to Vancouver, play World Championship Ultimate Frisbee and start my own thing. Which everybody thought was crazy, so I figured I was on the right track. <laughs> so I did that and while I was there, I did a lot of networking events. And I met my business partner, Daryl, over a giant plate of cheese and some really good wine. And he said, so Natalie, tell me what you do. And I said, I'm a homeless, unemployed bum, and I want to start my own business. He said, we should talk. <laughs> Which was great, right? Because we started this technology company together called Fundraiser. Uh, we built a Facebook application that allowed you to take payments on Facebook, which was pretty new back in 2008. People were pretty skeptical of that. So it was my first foray into the entrepreneurial world. A big deep dive into getting investors on board, figuring out our freemium versus premium model. Trying to build a business from scratch, that was my job, how to market and get customers when you have zero budget. So I turned to social media in a big way, because I liked it, I'm a pretty social person, seemed like a good fit. I started blogging, tweeting, obviously Facebook was huge, YouTube. And during that time I just discovered how much I loved this medium for being able to be your sales, marketing and customer service team. So I actually was starting a blog at this time for myself kind of a cathartic thing where I was interviewing female CEOs because for those of you in the tech industry, who's got like a tech startup here? Okay, Ooh, not many of you. Okay, there's like 5% women are CEOs and so I wanted to get into their head and figure out why there weren't more women in the tech field and in business in general. So I started my blog interviewing these successful women and as you can see it was an awesome specific niche. I wanted to target and help the ultimate female resource for all women entrepreneurs around the world. It's a complete disaster actually, but somehow the blog became popular 
And people were like, I really like what you're doing, but I don't quite know who you're targeting. And I was like, no kidding. As a brand marketing person, this is not a good idea. But it kept growing and kept growing, and it became my love. And I eventually left the business that I co-founded, because my business partner rightly said to me, Natalie, you're more passionate about this blog and helping people to start a business. So strike forward five years, and I guess what I've actually learned is that I've learned how to monetize me. That is exactly what I've done. Not that it's all about me, hopefully, because you see a lot of photos today, but essentially I've learned to monetize myself by giving a lot of value and education and showing people my journey as they go and how they can apply it to them. So, uh, yeah, I have this incredible blog now, it's The Suitcase Entrepreneur, I have a podcast, I have videos, I'm all over social media, I'm a social media whore. Um, I've done really well at getting major media. Uh, somehow over the years, I'm just, I don't know, just fallen into it, really pushed hard, hustled, got myself out there. Other people have talked me up. I was on the homepage of Yahoo Finance about a year ago. They did this video and they called it How to Be Rich and Homeless. You can imagine what the comments were like on that one. It was brilliant. The hate mail was great. And I wrote, a, wrote and self-published a best-selling book, which I'm really excited some of you guys have actually bought, and some of you have even read, so thank you so much for that. It's actually coming out two years this week when I did it, so there's a second edition going out. And this has been huge, the reason I'm telling all this, this has been huge for building a brand and a business, and more importantly, a tribe of awesome people who are like, yeah, I want to create freedom of business and adventure in life as well. How do I make money? People always ask me this. That's great, Natalie. How do you make money? I've actually had up to eight or nine revenue streams. Right now I have six. So I sell digital products and programs on my website. I've run events around the world, like workshops, and more importantly these days, I run mastermind retreats in exotic locations, which I love. I also sometimes get paid to speak. Thanks, guys. And uh, you don't make any money really from your book, but you make money off the back of that, you know, for speaking events and for people who come into your community. Don't ever think you're going to get rich on a book. <laughs> Ooh. And the other ones that I had as well. So sponsorship, sorry, for my podcast and affiliate marketing, which I used to think was a dirty word. It was actually these days what I like to call trust marketing. So let's get into how we can get you to find your sweet spot, which is not your G-spot, just in case you're wondering, but <laughs> if you find it like your G-spot, it can lead to a lot of pleasurable experiences. <laughs> just saying. Okay, what is your sweet spot? It's the intersection between what you like to do, or preferably love to do, what you're good at, or preferably great at, and this last part, which a lot of people can't quite figure out, what people will pay you for. So how do you find your sweet spot? <laughs> Coming back, just had a visual. All right, um, the first thing is know your fundamentals. A lot of people tell me what they don't know or what they're not good at, but you know what you know, right? So focus in on that. You don't need a lot of money to start a business. You don't need an MBA, but you do need a product or service idea that people, a group of people that are willing to pay for it and a way to get paid. We don't need to overcomplicate it. As Derek was saying, to start building out that payment processor, look where he went. Second, know your strengths. There are things that you were born with inherently that you're really good at. And because you were born with them and you're really good at them inherently, you tend to dismiss them and overlook them as something that actually somebody is going to pay money for. I know a lot of people who are great at matchmaking. I know a lot of people who are really good at making the complex simple. There are people who are just great at planning and organizing trips. You know those people, you know in yourself what you're really good at. So focus on your strengths. Second, listen to others. How often do you hear people going, you know what, Natalie? You're really good at drinking Caipirinhas at parties. If you could monetize that, it would be quite nice. I might show you later how to do that. Uh, so listen to what other people are talking to you about and what they say about you. That's very, very important. They see something in you that sometimes you don't see. And finally, then you need to find the solution. So how do you marry all those things together, your list and their list, and come up with something that is actually going to hopefully earn you money and allow you to travel the world if you'd like to and live a fantastic life? So I love giving examples. So I'm going to give an example about myself first and then some others because I think that's the best way to learn, right? So as I said, I built my business initially from social media. It was a tool, a medium, a platform that I loved. And so I started off with this 12-part blog post series on the entrepreneur's social media workout. I love sport, I love exercise, so I figured, ooh, we can have like a cool workout series going. Beginner training, advanced training, how to use Facebook, how to get vivacious on YouTube, I don't know, it was, it was pretty crazy. How to get terrifically toned on Twitter, bear with me. Anyway, I turned this 12-part blog post series, which became really popular, into a free book. 
this one right here. And uh, it went really well as well. It became my freebie opt-in, so people who opted in to find out more about what I did would get this book. And then I took it further, because this was free, obviously. I was still broke. This wasn't helping me. And I decided to run social media boot camps. This was a pretty big step for those of you who know. This is the point at which you're like, am I expert enough to do this? There's so many people doing social media. Can I call myself an expert? At this point, I was so broke that I was like, yeah, you know, I think I have to. I've been doing some consulting, I've been doing some coaching, but I was like, I'm just going to run with this. Luckily, I tapped into some government funding in Vancouver, BC, and so I was able to charge $1,500, which was awesome, for a two-day intense workshop. I ran three workshops, they were all sell out because I built up a pretty good network in Vancouver, and I went from honestly broke, like seriously broke, to $15,000 in a month. And I was like, this is amazing. I just, I just got paid to do what I love. And then, unlike most normal people who have now got a great network, I had people asking me for consulting, coaching, to run more workshops, I did the complete opposite. I decided, I've got this now, I think I'm going to take off to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and turn this into an online program that I can run from anywhere. Never launched an online program before, sorry about the branding, this is old school, uh, but it was called the Woman's World Social Media Bootcamp. I put it online, I charged $297 for it, I ran my first ever webinar, uh, I had 30 people show up and I made one sale. That felt so exciting. Have you guys ever had that first moment of somebody actually bought my shit? It was brilliant. It was so exciting. And I went on to make a few more thousand dollars, which was great. I would warn you, probably never go to a country that you've never been to before, where you speak Spanish but Argentinian Spanish, for those of you who know it's totally different, where the internet is not great, where you're trying to find an apartment, get to know your surroundings, make friends while you're launching your first ever online program. Maybe not the smartest idea, but I'll tell you what, it taught me a lot. It taught me how to hustle, it taught me how to make shit happen. And as I said, I now had a program and product I could sell. And then I took that further, monetizing it, because I got listened to people who were like, Natalie, I want you to coach me. I want to be able to get new training, not just this program. So I came up with a social media club, it was a Facebook group, and a once a month training with me in a group style it was really cool. So I just taken this blog post series and spun it out to three or four different things. And I guess that's the whole point of today, is how can you monetize you and scale yourself, just starting with one thing. So, I love real life case studies, let's get on to a couple. So I have people in my Freedom Plan program, and I ask them to tell me what their sweet spot was. Who here is an artist? We've got artists in the room? Well, not as many as I thought. Okay, like creators, photographers, etc., writers. Great, so artists are often in that starving artist routine, right? That I, I love what I do, but I don't want to charge people, or I can't charge enough, or I can't make money from this thing that I love. So I had one of the people list out their sweet spot, and they said, oh, I like, you know, journaling, yoga, meditation, painting, creating. I think a lot of us love these things you can see up on the screen. And then they said, well, what, do I, what am I good at? Well, I'm really good at painting impressionist landscapes, and I'm also good at giving constructive feedback, and I also love teaching people. So you can start to see, just by writing this down, how they could marry this into something that they could make money from. And then I put it together and they're like, you know what, people could pay me for my original artwork. And I was like, yeah, they could. It's going to be a long, hard road unless you were able to charge a lot of money to get into where you want to be. Once I started writing down that they could do iPhone accessories and merchandise, I was like, now you're thinking. Then there were like e-courses, workshops, workshops including meditation and journaling, etc. So you can see that they were really starting to think through how can they monetize themselves. And then I gave them an example of somebody who's done just that. So Julia Kelly was recently on my podcast. She's a caricature artist. She started out not knowing how to be a caricature artist. She got a job at a major theme park. They paid her $8.50 an hour to basically do caricatures. So she learned on the job, which a lot of us do. And then she realized after time, $8.50 an hour, 10 hour work days, not really getting me anywhere quickly. So she started doing it freelance on the side for friends and family, starting to charge more money people really liked it. And before you knew it, she was like, I can charge even more for this. She now charges $250 an hour, she has a six-figure business, and she's studying full-time. What's more, she's contracted out to other character artists, pays them a commission, gets them work. And as you can see here, she's gone into corporate events, parties, weddings, and even like custom caricatures for people who want to commission her. So you can just see how she's taken this one job at $8.50 an hour and spun it out to this. Starting to get the hang of it? Okay, who here loves to cook? 
Awesome. Great. You guys can cook me a meal anytime and I'll do the dishes because it's not my favorite thing, right? I love cooking breakfast, but outside of that. But I know a lot of people don't want to cook and they're like, well, who's going to pay me to cook? So here's what this person put. They like cooking and eating healthy. That was what they just loved to do. What are they good at? Well, they're good at a few more things. Cooking allergy-friendly meals, gluten-free recipes. Uh, they were really good at making healthy meals that tasted really good, right? So now you're starting to see there's a nice pattern coming through. What could they do? How could they monetize this? Ebooks, recipes, probably videos online, an online training course. Suddenly they're like, I could have a book. I could speak on stage. I could go on TV. So they suddenly went from, I just like cooking, to, oh my gosh, I could actually make a business out of this and travel the world if they wanted. So I gave them an example. Heather Pierce Giannoni, which is a great last name, was actually an accountant for eight years. And she's like, this is not my... This is not my day job, right? Like, I just do not want to do this for the rest of my life. But I love cooking. I think I'm social. I love holding dinner parties for my friends. I think I could do this, but there's so many people making videos online about cooking. So she got a new kitchen and she started doing YouTube videos and she realized that her personality and her style of presenting was really attracting the female market and more importantly, the busy female entrepreneurs who just wanted healthy food that they could cook on the go. And she went even further than that and she realized that she really wanted to work with female entrepreneurs are launching online products. If you guys have ever done a full launch, it is like an entire chapter of your life gone because you're working night and day on making that launch a huge success. You tend to forget to exercise, eat healthy, etc. So she came up with customized plans for that very audience. So even though it's still within the cooking niche, she's gone really specific, right? And this is now, once again, a multiple six-figure business. She's no longer doing accounting. All right, who doesn't love to throw parties? I do, so uh, drink your parties, thank you. Yeah, so who do you think that you can monetize being somebody who loves their own parties? Well, you can. So this person, that's all they put on their, their sweet spot. I was like, that's it? That's all you love? Their own parties, great. So I said, what are you good at? And they're like, coming up with fun themes, making decorations. I was like, okay, how could you monetize this? They're like, well, I could do party styling, party rentals, like a subscription style box where everything gets delivered for your party. Pretty cool. And I was like, excellent, now you're thinking. So I gave an example of somebody who's done just this. Kim, over at Tomcat, and Tomcat, in the name of her two kids, realized that she had this knack for throwing really cool birthday parties. She loved making decorations. She loved going all out at the birthday parties. Her friends, family, and the parents of the other kids were like, you are amazing at this, right? She was like, they're like, could you do this for me? She's like, sure. So she started charging, running cool parties, sending them the cards the merchandise, the accessories, and soon she had more business than she could handle. And she built a business that she couldn't scale. So what did she do? She took it online. She said, here are my designs for the cards. Here are my designs for the invites. Take it. Here's some awesome accessories that I'm now starting to sell. She got picked up by Pottery Barn's kids. She got picked up by Martha Stewart. She's been on major press. And now she's in huge demand with this amazing e-commerce shop. She does photo events now, styling of major parties for celebrities all from starting out with her two-year-old's birthday party. So it's possible. Are you guys excited now if I'm going to tell you how to take all the stuff that you just learned about figuring out your sweet spot and how to launch a product in the next seven days? Yeah. Are you excited? Okay, thank you. It's a little Tony Robbins moment. Okay. So I actually did this with my Freedom Plan members. I challenged them and I said, in the next seven days, you're going to come up with an idea and you're going to launch a product. And they freaked out. I thought I was being really awesome. I was like holding them accountable. Here's this exercise. They freaked. Most people had never done this before in their life. So here's what I said. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to come up with a mini topic that you could teach right now. Everybody has a topic they could teach me right now that you could hold in around one to two hours. Maybe there's a Q&A involved in that. Then I said you're going to pick a date. This is holding you accountable. In your calendar in the next seven days to promote, market, and do this training. And they were like... Okay? And then I said, you're going to make an offer. You have to tell people about this training, right? All the benefits behind this training. Make an offer to your email list. I heard, Natalie, I don't have an email list. I was like, create one. Give a $50 budget to Facebook advertising. Target your customers, even if you get 10 or 20 people on there. And if you don't want to do that, ask every single friend and family member that you know to share the training page, right? What made this more tricky is that you had to charge for it up front, so it wasn't free. People were panicking. Then I said, do the webinar. This is the next step that most people never do. They never take action. And granted, there were some people who didn't take it this far. But people did the webinar training. I said, you go to your meeting, any meeting, meeting burner, 
Webinar Jam or Google Hangouts. Almost all of those that I just said are paid for, but they all have a 30-day free trial. So you use it effectively. So they ran the webinars, and then I said, send people the recording, and now, voila, you have a product. Even if the webinar didn't go that well, you've still now got a product. I love that you guys take the photos of this. <laughs> okay, you heard it here. So, here are some results, because I love giving results. This is real life case studies for people who had never, ever, ever done this before in their life. So Karen is in the healthy food and sports niche. She really loves helping people to make real energy food bars with natural ingredients, right? She'd never done a training in her life. She had a tiny list. She ran a training on homemade energy bars, chews, and gels made easy. She had five people register who paid her $17. I know this is not breaking the bank, but she could have bought quite a few people a drink at the bar. And more importantly, with that $85, she suddenly realized, one, she's really good at holding webinars, two, she actually enjoyed it, three, she had more confidence that she actually could sell her knowledge online. And that was probably the biggest gift from her doing the seven-day challenge. Who else did we have? We had Gareth, who lives in England, but teaches Spanish people how to speak at a corporate level of English. So he tweeted out, I'm running a class on conditional sentences on this day. And he put it on his blog, and he put it out to his email list. Once again, not a big email list. Up until this point, all he'd ever done was individual one-on-one -on -one speaking sessions. He made 25 sales at 10 euros. I told him he should have been charging double that. And he was actually at my London meetup making sales on PayPal while we're there. He's like, oh my god, this is awesome. Three more people signed up. And I was like, see? And what he realized from making this amount of money, which isn't huge once again, but is that he had a whole other revenue stream that he hadn't considered, that he could actually scale. So now he had a product and another way of making this training program go out to more and more and more people that he'd never be able to reach. And one more example. This lady actually won my challenge because I like to give gifts, so she won some coaching with me. And she is based in Japan, even though she's from America, and she did How to Wow Your Audience in English with the Japanese market, right? Japanese market, if you've ever been there, amazing community, quite introverted, quite uh, shy people on the whole, so this was a big topic. And what happened? She had 19 paying registrants, she had heaps of people interacting in the comments, and she made 412 US dollars, she's never done this before, she had a real issue with payments because PayPal doesn't work in Japan, so she had to get past that hurdle. She loved it. She loved training live online. She realized that even though she loves workshops, this was a whole other way of being able to educate people. And now she's spinning it out even further. So she's repurposing this into an ebook at a lower price point to get people in the door when they visit her website. Then she's going to offer three tier pricing and sell the recording from this webinar or the recording in the book or both. She's already got lots more things. She's going to do a more in depth training program based off this initial program, which is about a 60 to 90 minute training. She's going to do monthly webinars, paid webinars, because she's so excited about them now on different topics. And now she's got this audience who know that she's going to deliver. And she's going to carry on doing workshops. So you can see how she's just created like five new revenue streams from doing one challenge. Excited? All right, so finally, I'm going to come to, you found your sweet spot and maybe your G spot. You've got this awesome way of monetizing yourself. And along the way, hopefully, you've been building a lot of credibility with your fans. And a lot of people say, well, how do you build a tribe? And I would say it starts slowly, and then it gains momentum. If you're really being true to yourself, offering a ton of value, and staying true to that vision that you have in life. So as you guys know, I just recently changed it to, I want to help one million people create freedom of business and adventure in life. So now I've got a big mission, and I need you guys to help me with it. But that's how I get people on board, right? They buy into that mission. I like that. Nellie's a little crazy. She has a strange accent from New Zealand, but I like where she's going with it. So there are two simple ways that you can build a community using social media and your brand that are really going to get people fired up. First one, be yourself. Be helpful and be outstanding. Seems really simple, right? But you'd be surprised how many people are not themselves online. Have you been to a conference where you meet somebody finally that you've always really admired and they're just nothing like you thought they'd be? It was really cool, Lodi came to my meetup the other night and he's like, Natalie, you're just like you look in your photos and you're just like that person. I was like, thank you. Yeah, I didn't think it was anybody else. People listen to my podcast and they're like, oh, you sound just like your podcast. <laughs> so, yes, I do. All right. Second, treat your tribe, your people, like you give a damn. I'm always amazed at people on social media going, yeah, I got a new subscriber today. Or customer 356 just joined up. Like, 
When I ran my freedom plan, I phoned every single person who joined. It took two days because they were in total different time zones. I phoned every single person and they were blown away that I actually gave them the call. That's because I care about them. They just made a big investment in my program, right? And I want to make sure that they feel welcome, part of the tribe. So here's some examples of how I do it and how other people do it. I share my world. I am not afraid to do handstands on stage, which I can do one if you guys want it. Um, oh, I knew I just walked into that. Maybe I'll do it at the end when my thing doesn't fall off. Um, I jump into Cold Lake's name in my underwear and then I post it online. He does that. I sit on my suitcase, I drink cocktails, I go on paddle boards with dogs. I mean, I'm just sharing my world and people really buy into that because it's totally who I am. I'm living my life, I'm sharing it with you in the hope that it will inspire you to do your own thing. And then I encourage my tribe to share their world. So this is people doing the freedom plan from laptops around the world. One lady in a tree house through Airbnb, it was super cool. So I get them to post photos, like where are you, what are you doing today? Where are you working from? What's your environment like? It really motivates other people. Because everybody's on their own journey. Alan, who's in the audience, is doing it from a camper van. Where's Alan? Woo! Yeah. Who was that? So awesome. Freedom! Okay. I love doing live online events. I know you guys, for some of this, might scare you, but live online events are such a great way. If you have an international audience or an audience overseas, but you're traveling the world, it's the way of bringing them together, right? So I love doing webinars, tons of free training, give away lots of value, make people's day. I love doing podcasts, sometimes I get to do them with my guests in person. This is Jason and Travis from Zero to Travel and Pack of Peanuts, two travel bloggers. And I just love it, People, you're in somebody's ear twice a week, giving them tons of value, they appreciate it. And then they meet you in person, they're like, I love that episode, where you talked about the fact you got lost on the highway on your scooter. And I recently did a periscope. It was a complete, like, I was melting in the sun on my Lisbon apartment terrace. I was trying to show them the view and, and like, melting away. There's hearts flying and people coming in from around the world who've been in my community for years. And I was like, thanks for joining. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's awesome that you're here. <laughs> um, what about holding meetups and in person? Just note, by the way, it's better if you get people to buy your merchandise. It says, choose freedom, which you're wearing around your neck today. So it looks better in photos if you're going to have some merchandise get people to do that for you. And these people that all bought the stuff and come to my book launch or meetups so are just gathering people together because when you gather the like-minded people who are already in your community, they're going to make amazing connections and friendships that go beyond the life of your community. Really important. I love meeting up with people in person. I have people go, hey Natalie, you're coming to Berlin, I'd love to meet. Oh, you're on a beach somewhere, you're in the snow. I actually take the time out to meet up with people who get in contact and say, yep, I'd love to see you. And then I get to hear more about them and what they're doing. Always cool to meet the tribe. And finally, somewhere in there, I love running paid retreats, workshops, and getaways. Those experiences that I love to create are just incredible. Like the takeaways that people get, the personal transformations, are unbelievable. So if that's your style, if that's your personality, you love bringing people together, run workshops, run retreats around the world, like Bali, Lisbon, Barcelona, New Zealand, we're also down the Caribbean on cruise ships. And then label your awesome tribe. My tribe are freedom fighters. I always say it at the start of my podcast. People come up to me like Jan the other day and he's like, Natalie, I think I converted my Airbnb host to be a freedom fighter. It's like, that's awesome. Or you could publish a book. I mean, I know it sounds simple and make it sound simple, but I think everybody has a book in them, right? And then you can start them early. So they start reading really young, like this little guy. And then you've got a fan for life. Or a manifesto, which you could probably do in a weekend. Or a speech, get your vision out there. Like, whatever you can to really get people impassioned about what you're doing and empowered and feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. That's how you build a community. And finally, just staying true to you. Be a goofball, like me jumping in the snow here. Um, openly share your failures, trials, and tribulations. I don't know if anybody's listened to my podcast or read my newsletter. In the last week, I lost the internet during my webinar because I forgot to plug in the router. I locked myself out of my apartment in Lisbon and I left my iPhone 6 in a public toilet. I mean, I'm happy to share that shit because I was just off the charts, like completely not onto it that week. And people love it. So like, oh, Natalie doesn't actually have her shit together all the time. Be real. Share real pictures and videos. As I said, if you meet somebody in person and you've got your super media photo up on your website all the time and then you turn up looking pretty terrible, people are like, is that the same person that I've admired for so long? So be real, be true, be authentic. Um, provide a ton of great tips and advice to people. Be helpful, be outstanding all the time. Don't do that. I'm just going to show you a little bit, but then you'll have to buy this thing for later. Like, show them the how. 
Give them everything you've got. People love it. And they will still turn up and pay. And behind the scenes is great, right? How are you doing your webinar? How are you running your business? How are you playing your piano from your camper van? Very cool stuff. People love to know that because it makes you more human. It lets you inside their world. And finally, let people be advocates and brand ambassadors for you. I have people in my programs. I have people who are like, can I help you with this event? I want to like sing and praise about this. Can I be included on the next thing? Can I help you with your right to freedom movement? And I'm like, absolutely. Because I cannot do this by myself. You cannot build a world-changing business by yourself. So please reach out and get your community on board. I think that's actually it. So I want to know, how are you going to monetize you? How are you going to find your sweet spot? How are you going to create multiple revenue streams doing what you love? And how are you going to build this awesome tribe that supports you and allows you to create more change in this world? Thank you so much, guys. We want to give you a hug.